Hello my darlings, would you like to create a 1950s capsule wardrobe and you don't know where to start? Well, I'm here for you. I will show you all the sewing patterns I used to make mine. And let's start with dresses. First dress is using this McCall 3528 pattern, which is from 1955. And I used view A, but I made the sleeves elbow length because I made it for winter and I added these bows to make them cuter. Next dress is this classic 1950s shirt waist dress and the pattern is actually free, it's from Mood and it's called Shirley Dress, so you can download it for free. And I really like this uh, shirt waist dress, it reminds me of Betty Draper from Mad Men. And how cute is this yellow plaid? Moving on to wiggle dresses, this pattern is basically a mix of the Peggy bodice and the Wanda skirt from Gertie's Patreon. I am a patron of hers for a long time now and I have had some beautiful patterns so far. And even though they're reproduction patterns, they're very close to the authentic ones. This is another Gertie pattern, but not from her Patreon this time. This is from her book, Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses. I really love this shape of dress, it's a sheath dress and the, the skirt is very simple, it's actually just a plain rectangle and you do some pleats to bring the waist in and I used this beautiful vintage dead stock fabric which is quite warm and very pretty and actually very similar to the one Gertie is wearing in the book and you can see the pleats of the dress here and the lovely vintage buttons. One more wiggle dress from Gertie's Patreon, which is called the Joan Wiggle Dress because it was inspired by Joan Holloway, Mad Men. This pattern is for knit fabrics, not woven, and it was actually my first time making a knit anything. And I was lucky that this particular fabric was very easy to work with and it's so pretty, this houndstooth pattern. I will be definitely making more of these dresses. Now let's see my favorite skirt patterns. Okay, I know I'm gonna say Gertie again. I promise I'm not sponsored, I wish I were, but, uh, but I can't help it. This pattern is fantastic. It's called the Stanwick skirt and let's look at the pencil skirts first. So they are so versatile. You have choices for different waistbands, for different pocket shapes. So you saw the previous one and this is another one with different waistband and different shape for the pockets. And I made that one a little bit shorter. I actually made it a little bit tight on the waist as well, but yeah, it's fine. It looks good though, doesn't it? So apart from the pencil skirts on this pattern, you also have a pattern for swing skirt, for a full skirt, and it's quite full. You can see that, well, I actually forgot to add a button on this waistband, but it's okay, it's just between us. Oh, and I also have made a removable bib for this skirt which is included in the pattern. It featured in my fall lookbook video. And another Gertie circle skirt pattern. This one is free actually, it's on her site. You can download it and there's others, other free patterns as well you can download. And look how cute and full it is and it's so easy to make. And you can make a ton of these just using this pattern and just make a plain waistband. And speaking about full skirts, I wanted to show you my petticoat because I made it myself using another free pattern from Timeless Templates. It's a 1950s petticoat pattern and I used some lovely curtain fabric for it. It worked nicely, but next time I would like to try this pattern with a more stiff fabric. And let's move on to trousers and tops. Well, so uh, basically it's my only trousers pattern that I have used so far. I've made two pairs of trousers and this is one of them. It's the Simplicity 1818. I downloaded it from the Vintage Sewing Pattern Company and they are the classic high-waisted 50s cigarette pants. 
Now for this top, I am afraid I don't have a pattern to show you because I actually copied from a slash neck top I already had and self-drafted this pattern and I think it turned out really good. I've made two so far and I intend to make lots of them. And let's not forget this leotard that can be worn as a top and it's from the Barbie top and skipper bodysuit. And now for boleros and jackets. Here I am showing you the top I actually used to make the slash neck top pattern. And here is a very cute bolero by um, Gerti again. Uh, sorry guys, uh, but it's so pretty. It's the Peter Pan bolero from her Patreon. And it's so easy, so easy to make. I'm really glad I had this vintage fabric because it was a small piece, but just enough for this bolero. Another bolero a little bit more complicated though by Simplicity. 1319. I think this one is a re reproduction of the authentic one or something like that. I can't remember. But uh, it's a beautiful bolero and it also has a choice to make some swing jackets as well, which I want to try. I really love this one and it's with a boiled wool vintage fabric, which is so warm. It's just a little bit short. Well, this next jacket is also a bit short, but it's very pretty and classic early 50s shape with the dolman sleeves and the poofy back and the high collar i really love this and i chose a nice brown tweed fabric for it i think the pattern calls for bound buttonholes but i have never tried them and they really really scare me so i just stick to the normal buttonholes and i think they work nicely as well and I'll try to make the bound buttonholes one day. And now I'm not showing you my robe which I made recently and you probably saw my video uh, but this specific pattern can be used to make a coat, a swing coat and I would love to make a pink swing coat like the one Mrs. Maisel was wearing at the We Got the Rabbi. So this is it my friends, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. And subscribe for more vintage cuteness.